being raised in the church probably uh, was one of the best things for me and then also one of the worst things for me. Um, it was one of the best things just because it gave me uh, some solid ground to build myself off of. Um, my, my parents did a really good job at rooting my personality in the Lord and anchoring me um, in the Lord because if that's one thing that has stayed with me throughout my life is just that that the Lord has always held on to me even in the times that I didn't even hold on to Him. It's probably true for a lot of people but it's also true for me I have a very addictive personality. It's very easy for me to get uh, addicted to a certain thing whether it's good or bad, whether it's video games or whether it's sports or whether it's uh, music or a certain hobby. Um, I, uh, I tend to let certain things just consume my mind and you know I really you know, spend a lot of my time thinking about different things and in uh, behaviors as well. Uh, um, I started drinking when I was about 12 years old and uh, it started with a little bit at one uh, at first. My parents never really had a lot of alcohol in the house and um, I would just find different ways to get to it. Um, different friends, um, different uh, different places. Uh, There's even one time I remember I, you know, I used to steal alcohol. Um, and uh, on through high school, um, while I was while I was drinking, I actually was asked when I was 13 years old to play guitar at my local church. Um, and this is when we lived uh, down in San Luis Obispo area. And uh, so I played on the worship team there, and uh, I would show up every Sunday. Um, I didn't drink a whole lot then, but I just remember feeling really guilty. Um, sometimes when I came to church on Sundays because they were always asking us to prepare our hearts before we were, were doing worship and I wasn't a worship leader or anything like that it was, I was just more of a guy in the background and uh, I still would feel a lot of guilt on Sunday mornings when I would get up there in front of everybody and I would have a lot of people tell me that you know you look so good when you worship and you look you know like your heart is so into it and I just kind of felt bad because I know that in you know, inside me I, my heart didn't feel right about it didn't feel right about it. Like I didn't feel like I was worthy to be up there. Um, when I did actually worship though, I remember that there's always been a freedom for me in worship. I've always been able to let go in worship when it comes to music and when it comes to singing songs. I, I find a place where I just don't care about the guilt anymore. And that's always something that uh, has always been big for me. Um, I've always had people encourage me that, you know, I you know, am gifted in the form of worship or whatever it is. And that's helped me do that, but still through it, um, probably through a good six or seven years at the church, um, when I played on the worship team, it just was really tough sometimes that I would go in there and it just I wouldn't feel right about it. I wouldn't feel, you know, I don't want to be lying to these people. Um, and uh, the drinking continued on uh, until I was in college and I'd gone, I'd done well in high school and I went to Cal Poly and I had, uh, I was in the engineering program, which is not the easiest program to get into um, and uh, I didn't really know what I had um, and within two years uh, at Cal Poly I actually failed out because I was drinking so much and my priorities were out of, out of line. I was chasing girls and um, I had definitely not concentrated on the Lord, not kept him in my sights and you know didn't really care about things like that. I still went to church and I still played on the worship band, but I didn't really, you know, I just said, you know, just kept all those things kind of like in, that was my resume, you know, that I kind of kept, like that's that's me, and like I could sell myself and people still liked me, and like I could, you know, people still wanted to hang out with me and I wasn't like, you know, some degenerate or anything like that. I was very much, uh, um, I was very much two-faced, I guess. Two-faced in that like I could show people all the good things about me and only I knew about the bad things about me and I just didn't like, I didn't really let that get out and I convinced myself that it was fine. I convinced myself that you know I could just keep on going this way because I was good. And I kind of reached a breaking point um, living down there in that area and I said, you know, I gotta stop. I gotta stop this and I gotta, you know, I can't I can't keep drinking. I can't keep like being two-faced and I'm gonna stop this and, I'm, and this, is, this is gonna change. And uh, I know the Lord was there to encourage me in that, but um, I tried to do it all on my own. And I tried to do it all just by myself. And I moved up here to Santa Cruz when I was 19. It was, uh, it was a location change, and you know, obviously you can't move away from yourself.
but it was that was kind of my thing. That was my motivator. Is that since all these things around me, since my uh, surroundings were going to change, I was going to change, and that I was going to stop drinking, and I was going to stop behaving like this, and I was going to stop chasing girls, and I was going to stop like, you know, putting all these things before the Lord, and I was going to get right because you know it's time for me to grow up. It's time for me to like you know to, to move on and pass all those things. And and so I moved up here to Santa Cruz, and like you guessed it, obviously I just did not change at all. Um, even though all my surroundings had changed, myself, I was still the same. The drinking continued uh, despite, you know, a bunch of things happening, you know, the, despite like weird nights where I didn't remember anything or I wound up in places that, you know, I couldn't, uh, you know, I don't recall how I got there and just like different situations where I was like, I have no idea, you know, like, you know, definitely many times where I drank and drove and, and I would be home and I had no idea how I'd be home and my roommates would say, dude, you, you know, you left the door open and all the lights on and I don't remember ever coming into the house and um, just scary things like that and I kept on telling myself I gotta stop, I gotta stop, I gotta stop. In um, the middle of June 2009 I had promised myself two days before that I was gonna stop drinking and this was like that was the end. I drank that weekend, it was Saturday and the day that it was was a Tuesday and that Saturday I had sworn off drinking and then Tuesday I got off work and I was like you know what I just really want to go drink you know and so I took a flask and I went to the movies and uh, I drank the whole flask by myself in the movies, kind of sad. Um, and uh, after that I went to a bar and I met these guys that I barely knew. And they were, um, in my mind, worse off than I was, so I offered to give them a ride home. So I gave them a ride home and they lived up on the um, top end of the west side. And I lived in Aptos. And uh, I was coming down SoCal Avenue and uh, I crashed my car into a tree. And uh, I... I'm very fortunate that I didn't have anybody in the car. I'm very fortunate that I was not hurt. All I had was a scratch. I'm very fortunate that there was nobody else on the road at the time. Um, I was very fortunate that that tree was there or else I would have plowed right into the side of a restaurant. And uh, um, I just sat there and I got out of my car, I remember, um, and I just sat on the curb and, and I just cried. Um,